Last week, during Strictly Come Dancing, we got the latest and probably the last Doctor Who trailer before the whole 60th kicks off in November. In the first couple of seconds, we get the Doctor coming out of the TARDIS, which you've seen before, a new shot of Donna with her hands up. Obviously, these are all just sort of establishing the, the characters. I think the main the main two characters in, in the trailer from the first off. But then we get a couple of action shots. We get Donna's house exploding, I think, or it could be somebody else's house, but who knows. And then we get to see the unit sort of tower, proper Avengers style tower. And we get another couple more shots of the Doctor, quite an intense sort of close up of the Doctor looking up. So we'll find out what that's all about in November, I'm guessing. So after the titles of the Doctor Who trailer, we get some stock footage of London. So obviously, that's where the majority of this story is going to be set, or probably the first um, story in that case anyway. We get Donna saying the line which you've seen before, um, but this time it's sort of longer. We, we see more of, of the conversation she's having with Sylvia about how she's forgotten something. Um, and after all this time, there's always been something in the back of her mind obviously telling her that, that she's missing something important. And that is sort of mixed with a few shots of the Doctor sort of running around on his own. I'm guessing that's going to be from the first story, the Star Beast, and, and sort of probably him getting his bearings again, you know, arriving on Earth, newly regenerated, um, probably seeing the spaceship go overhead uh, and then maybe sort of going to investigate where, where it's crashed. Then we get the voiceover of um, the Doctor talking about Donna, um, about how he wiped her memory, um, and we get the shot of the Doctor and Donna sort of meeting again um, in Camden. The flashback is really nice. It's something I wasn't really expecting. We sort of see a shot from, I believe it's the Waters of Mars, um, and obviously we get the bit of footage of the Doctor wiping Donna's mind at the end of Series 4. But sort of seeing this flashback in the trailer is quite nice. I hope this doesn't happen throughout the specials and um, sort of beyond. I, I know obviously Doctor Who, um, the 60th anniversary, you know, is gonna is, is relying on um, sort of, you know, memories of the past and it's, it's what is there to celebrate. It's been around for 60 years. But I don't think sort of seeing flashbacks in the final story um, is, is really necessary. I sort of hope it's just something for the trailer. Um, just to give a bit of context and maybe just to get the average viewer to go, oh yeah, no, I remember that. So then we get a bunch of footage of spaceships flying overhead. You've got the Doctor and Donna's daughter, Rose. Uh, now, Rose is now confirmed to be Donna's daughter, which we all knew anyway, but it's, it's good that we now have proper, you know, that's a cold hard fact now. And then we get some stuff with Beat the Meep and, and Donna and a couple of comedic moments there. Um, the Doctor sort of entering a street and being surrounded by unit soldiers. Um, I'm sort of guessing that's where Donna now lives with, with the rest of the noble family. Doctor looking through letterboxes, I think it's a really nice touch. I think that's, that's very uh, it's very Doctor Who. Uh, and then obviously the Doctor sort of getting into the house and Sylvia trying to, trying to hide the Doctor away. That would make sense if all this is taken from the first story. Get a few more bits of of the Wrath Warriors or Wraith Warriors, however they're pronounced, um, shooting probably a unit down down Donna Street. But we then cut to a few clips from what I believe is going to be the second story, Wild Blue Yonder, which I don't know, sort of looks a bit like a space, I don't know, like a space station setting or some sort of um, base or, or something like that. It gives that sort of motif, and maybe. This will be connected somehow. Maybe it's, you know, all locations that we've seen is going to be shared across all three stories. Maybe it's going to be separate. And I just want to get our first glimpse of Kate Lifford Stewart as well. So, the back of the head, um, the doctor sort of looks like he's on that base setting. So, I think from what we've seen of, of the helicopters sort of flying towards the, the unit tower in London, um, that's, that's going to be sort of in there. And maybe even going back to the clips you've seen before of uh, Donna sort of running through the corridors of that sort of base setting, um, which I just said could be from the second story. Maybe that's going to be the unit base. But we then also get our first glimpse of Neil Patrick Harris, which again, he is now being um, 
officially announced as the Celestial toy maker. Now, the next clip which stands out to me is where the TARDIS is run away. That, that clip, which again could be from the second story. Looking at the footage here, it does look like a completely different location from before. But then again, it could be the unit base again. Um, who, who knows at this point? Or it could be the Celestial Toymaker's domain. To say with the Celestial Toymaker, you can sort of do anything. We see the unit tower again, and the same sort of couple of shots of the helicopter heading towards the tower, the, the doctor sort of looking out, and, and then now the helicopter behind, which has a TARDIS sort of attached, which is quite reminiscent of 10 years ago, the 50th anniversary. And then we actually have the doctor meeting Kate Lethbridge Stewart, which obviously then officially brings in Kate. Which is really nice to, to sort of see, a bit like, obviously, uh, Nicholas Courtney, the, the Brigadier. He was a solid staple from Patrick Trout and John Pertwee, Tom Baker, Peter Davison. So to have a sort of returning character again, Brigadier's daughter, and the same across, oh, how many Doctors has she been involved with? I think Matt Smith, wasn't it? The first one, I think. So, again, quite a few, uh, and it's just nice to keep that continuity, sort of keep going, you know, Doctor Who is, it just makes the world um, feel real. Now, that scene in the, the toy shop where the Doctor and the toy maker meet, and the Doctor is sort of starting to recognise the toy maker, uh, and, and he's, the toy maker sort of toying the Doctor. Again, I think that's going to be one of those scenes that um, is going to be really impactful. I feel like Russell's very good at that. If you are sort of the, the, the public, just the general people on the street, they're going to sort of remember uh, moments from, from the Russell T. Davis era before, the David Tennant era, um, just because Russell was very good at sort of making uh, moments memorable, um, not just on in Doctor Who, but I think on, on TV in general. There's quite a few shots sort of mentioned with loads of action explosions and uh, everyone looking a bit emotional and running around. But even the Doctor looks really stressed and, and quite traumatised himself, which obviously then makes everyone think, you know, yikes, you know, obviously he's up against someone really uh, sort of powerful. Jumping back to the Celestial toy maker, that even in that story, back in William Hartnell, 1966, the Doctor had met the toy maker before and he'd escaped, he'd ran away from him, which then sort of fits into this story, maybe obviously that bit with the TARDIS running away. Maybe it's a similar thing. Obviously, the, the Celestial Toymaker took the TARDIS before, and maybe maybe he will do that again. Maybe after the first story, in, straight into the second, the TARDIS would be taken away, and then that would be it. We won't get it back until, until obviously, uh, everything's ironed out again, and, and the Doctor regenerates back into Shooty. Well, not back, but regenerates into Shooty Gatwa. And then we obviously we get that clip where the Doctor is telling Donna, I don't know if I can save your life this time. Now, David Tennant does a very good job at sort of conveying the, the emotion and, and very good the, the emotional scenes. It really sort of, I think, drives a point of, will Donna come out of this alive? After a few shots you've seen before, I think across all three stories, it sort of cuts to black. And then we get the infamous, or it probably will become infamous, shot of Shooty Gatwa as the Doctor. That's the trailer. I'm I'm really excited. I think this question, uh, this trailer rather, um, brings up a lot more questions. It does its job of getting, I mean, at least for me, uh, Doctor Who fan, um, sort of quite excited for what's to come. It'll be interesting to hear sort of the, the average, um, what the average sort of viewer sort of thought of this trailer. Maybe I should have asked a few people for this video, but I haven't. So I can only give my own thoughts. I'm very excited. Hopefully you are too. We've only got now a few weeks, like eight weeks. Yeah, maybe yeah, around eight weeks, I think, to go until uh, we get the new Doctor Who. So let's stay excited and uh, not long to wait now. If you enjoyed what you saw here today, feel free to subscribe for similar content. If there was a particular video or section of the video you liked, let me know by liking or commenting on the video. Your likes and comments could influence the next topic I talk about. Thanks for watching.